Good evening. I have a few announcements. Uh, this Sunday, we continue with our hybrid worship service. We have in-person worship, as well as live streaming that worship to Facebook and YouTube. So you can tune in and be all together at nine o'clock in many different ways. And of course, it remains on YouTube, so you can watch it there anytime. David Wenzel will play two pieces on the clarinet. And of course, Kimberly Ayrton will be playing piano and organ. We're continuing our Tuesday morning book study of Bad Girls of the Bible. And this week, we are going to be studying Job's wife. Tonight, we're going to study, uh, focus on this week's gospel text. And uh, we will start with a reading from the Daily Feast, Meditations from Feasting on the Word. If we were to give this text a title, it might be something like Jesus, the multitasker. In our fast-paced 21st century world, this story within a story may not seem terribly odd. However, in the context of the slower pace of the first century world, uh, this story conveys a sense of urgency, frantic energy, and even confusion. Qualities, it appears from the gospel stories, that were neither unknown nor frightening to Jesus. Jesus' attention to the desperate needs of both petitioners portrayed in this text becomes a reminder for us of the God who is never too busy to hear our prayers and respond to our pleas in amazing and unexpected ways. As you hear this text, hear it from the point of view of the hemorrhaging woman or the parent of the child. What new insights do you get from this perspective? I think we have a little competition here, but I will continue to read loud. Our reading is from Mark chapter five, beginning with verse 21. Jesus crossed the lake again, and on the other side, a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Jarius, one of the synagogue leaders, came forward. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded with him, my daughter is about to die. Please come and place your hands on her so that she can be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A swarm of people were following Jesus, crowding in on him. A woman was there who had been bleeding for 12 years. She suffered a lot under the care of many doctors and had spent everything she had without getting any better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Because she had heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothes. She was thinking, if I can just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Her bleeding stopped immediately, and she sensed in her body that her illness had been healed. At that very moment, Jesus recognized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, don't you see the crowd is pressing against you? Yet you ask who touched my clothes? But Jesus looked around carefully to see who had done it. The woman, full of fear and trembling, came forward. 
Knowing what had happened to her, she fell down in front of Jesus and told him the whole truth. He responded, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace, healed from your disease. While Jesus was still speaking with her, messengers came from the synagogue leader's house saying to Jesus, your daughter has died, to Jarius, your daughter has died. Why bother the teacher any longer? But Jesus overheard their report and said to the synagogue leader, don't be afraid, just keep touching. He didn't allow anyone to follow him except Peter, James, and John, James' brother. They came to the synagogue leader's house and he saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, what's all this commotion and crying about? The child isn't dead, she's only sleeping. They laughed at him, but he threw them out. Then taking the child's parents and the disciples with him, he went to the room where she was. Taking her hand, he said to her, Talithia kum, which means young woman, get up. Suddenly the young woman got up and began to walk around she was 12 years old. They were shocked. He gave them strict orders that no one should know what had happened, and he told them to give her something to eat. Every person of faith who suffers, such as the hemorrhaging woman and the desperate parents of the dying little girl, prays for and usually believes in the possibility of miraculous healing. But dramatic physical healing is rarely the response to those prayers. Here then is an opportunity to explore healing in its less obvious, less dramatic dimensions. Healing as peace and acceptance in the face of disappointment and as awareness of the continuing presence of God in our times of despair. A related question has to do with what role faith plays in our healing. These examples challenge us to examine our own faith, asking how we find the strength to claim God's promises of healing and hope for ourselves, and how we empower others to do the same. Let us be in a time of prayer this evening. If you would like to lift up a name or concern, please type it into the chat, but please only use first names. Gracious God, we are seeking you for our refuge. Your power is at work within and amongst us, even when we are unaware we want to respond, not as fools, but as faithful friends of Jesus. We have come to discover the riches we did not know we possessed. We are here to offer our best for the good of all. Use us, we pray, to accomplish in and through this church and our lives far more than we can ask or imagine. We continue to pray for everyone worldwide dealing with the coronavirus. We especially lift up other countries and areas where hospitals 
are filled and people cannot find health care. We pray for all people as everyone adjusts to new guidelines, for those who are eager to move forward and those who feel more comfortable moving slow. We pray everyone respects each other as we move forward into a new way of living. We pray for all leaders and people of this world. We ask you to give us a clear vision of the world as you intend and the will to realize that dr the dream of justice and peace is for all. We pray for your church as there are new beginnings afoot. We pray for your lead as we move forward in many new ways. We pray for an, an end to the injustices of racism. And we pray for you to place opportunities before us, calling us to action. We pray for our graduates as, we, as they move forward, starting a new future. Give them strength, courage, and wisdom. Touch us, healing God, so that we may hear and see those in our lives in need of your healing presence. Those who are sick, hurting, grieving, and hoping. And we ask that you surround all those listed and those names on our hearts with your light and your healing love. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, it is in remembering that I see your hand. It is in remembering sadness that I see I was not alone, but was held by you in tears shared, in hands held in prayer, and I touched your hem. I learned of loss, but you did not let me lose you. At times when I felt I was losing my way, you called my name and drew back with cords of love, a kind word, a call, a note, and I touched your hem. You walked with me giving me others who had made the same journey before me, who shared their pain and accompanied me. You taught me to be free of resentment. You taught me how to forgive. And I touched your hem. The darkness gradually became light within and without, reminding me of Peter's words to pay attention to you, to your word, as to a shining light in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in my heart. You blessed me with a new place, and I touched your hem. You gave me courage, ever reminding me that I am a part of the body of Christ in the world, shaped by all who have gone before me, who are all who are with me now and who are yet to come. And I touched your hem. 
May I look forward with trust, with discernment, not forgetting what is behind, but moving toward what lies ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ, my heart is grateful, my spirit is willing, for I have touched your hem. I admit, O oh God, that it is hard to respond to everyone around me who is reaching out for comfort, for healing, for wholeness. Sometimes it just feels overwhelming and I don't know how to respond. Fill me with your faith and remind me of Jesus' gentle and firm authority. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you on Sunday in person or virtually. Have a great evening.